ancient Rome is renowned for its magnificent structures, such as aqueducts, amphitheaters, and majestic temples. One crucial aspect of its infrastructure, however, often goes overlooked, the sewage system. For a city with a million inhabitants, much waste was produced on a daily basis. Also, due to its hot Mediterranean climate, it was essential that Rome efficiently managed its sewage to prevent disease. Before sewers were built, the valleys between Rome's hills were wet and marshy. These areas became hotbeds of disease, especially malaria, during the summer. The Campus Martius Plain, lying at the bend of the River Tiber, was partially troublesome and was constantly flooded. This situation required an effective solution to cleanse the land and make it healthy and usable. Once the aqueducts arrived in Rome, carrying large volumes of water to the city, the drainage challenge increased. The aqueducts not only supplied drinking water for the Romans, but also created the need for a more robust sewage system. However, at the same time, abundant water made it easier to dispose of waste, turning the sewage into a continuous flow that helped keep the city clean. The heart of Rome's sewage system was the Cloca Maxima, one of the world's oldest and largest drainage systems. Its construction is traditionally attributed to Roman kings, specifically Tarquinius Priscus, or, according to other sources, his successor, Tarquinius Superbus. According to legend, the project was done using forced labor by Roman citizens, reflecting its importance. The Cloca Maxima was not only a practical infrastructure, but also a landmark symbol of the power and organizational capacity of Rome's rulers. Originally built around the 6th century BC, the Cloca Maxima drained water from the marshes between the hills, but over time it became a crucial waterway for the city's sewage. Originally, the Cloca Maxima was probably an open ditch. The Romans were engineering and construction masters, reflected in the way they designed and maintained their sewage systems. The Cloca Maxima was built with carefully fitted stones, providing a durable structure that stood the test of time. Regular maintenance of the sewers was also a priority, with workers dedicated to cleaning and repairing the structures to keep them running efficiently. The Cloca Maxima extended the underground in Rome, collecting water from several sections of the city and often flowing into the River Tiber through an arch that can still be seen today. This discharge point into the Tiber was vital for keeping the city free of floods and stagnant water, which could cause disease. The Cloca Maxima was not Rome's only drainage system. On the Campus Martius, the Europus Canal is another example of how the Romans dealt with excess water. This flat, low-lying area was especially prone to flooding, and the Europus Canal helped direct the water into the Tiber to complement the work of the Cloca Maxima. Several ancient authors, especially the Greeks, profoundly admired Roman ingenuity in the construction and management of complex drainage systems. For instance, the geographer Strabo voiced his admiration for the Romans in his work, stressing their expertise in fields such as drainage engineering. He wrote, Although the Greeks seem to have targeted the foundation of their cities well, since they sought beautiful sites that were naturally fortified and well provided with strong positions, harbors, and good land, the Romans exercised good foresight in matters that the Greeks did not concern themselves with, such as building roads and establishing water and sewers capable of washing the city's filth into the Tiber. The sewers, covered with well-set stones, allow enough room in places for hay wagons to pass through. For the Greeks, who cherished practical and technical ability, Rome's sewers were living proof of the Romans' prowess in solving urban challenges effectively and lastingly. Following years of civil war after Julius Caesar's assassination, the Roman sewers were in a terrible condition. The city, which was increasingly growing in population and influence, was faced with major infrastructure challenges. During Augustus's rule, Rome underwent a renovation and restoration period after decades of political conflict. As part of the various reconstruction projects, the city's sewers, which had been ignored, became a priority for Augustus. To oversee the restoration efforts, Augustus appointed his trusted friend and future son-in-law, Agrippa, to supervise the city's public works. He took on a magistracy that included direct responsibility for the Roman sewers, including the Cloca Maxima. On one occasion, he even sailed through a section of these sewers in a boat, probably as part of a political stunt. This not only emphasized the significance of public works, but also proved Agrippa's personal commitment to restoring Rome's infrastructure. 
While there were many sewers, public latrines, and other sanitation infrastructures, disease was on the rise, and this was also because most homes were not connected to manholes and street drains. Some apartment blocks could have a latrine and a fountain on the ground floor, but this did not prevent the residents of the upper floors from throwing their waste into the lanes, and since there was no public street cleaning in Rome, the neighborhoods were racked with disease. However, around 100 AD, the Romans started to directly connect the houses to the sewers and completed most of the sewage infrastructure. Drains were laid throughout the city, serving as public latrines, and they also acted as rubbish dumps for houses that were not directly connected to a sewer. The Romans had a complex system of stone-covered sewers, much like modern ones. The waste flushed from the latrines would flow through a central channel into the main sewage system, and then into a nearby river or stream. But it was still not unusual for Romans to continue throwing waste out of their windows directly onto the streets. Notwithstanding the public health problems caused by sewage, the Roman sanitation system was truly groundbreaking for its time. The ability to efficiently channel waste out of towns and cities not only greatly improved living conditions, but also laid down a model that was emulated throughout the Roman Empire. Many of these systems can still be seen and admired today, emphasizing the durability and lasting impact of Roman engineering. If you have enjoyed learning more about how sanitation and the sewage system worked in Rome, please like this video and subscribe to our channel to watch more such videos.